Five inches of rain fell the week of the 1994 Daytona 500, and there was an emotional pall over the track as well. 1993 had seen the deaths of 1992 Daytona winner Davey Allison and 1992 Winston Cup champion Alan Kolwicki in non-racing accidents. Neil Bonnet, trying to come back from serious injury suffered in a 1990 crash, and rookie Rodney Orr had lost their lives in separate practice accidents. On race day, the skies cleared, and 77 degree temperatures greeted the field. The crews worked frantically on Sunday morning to recalibrate their setups, but by race time, the only sure thing was that there would be more work to do throughout the race. Loy Allen was on the pole, the first rookie ever, but he would not lead the race for even one lap. 1991 winner Ernie Irvin, who had taken over the number 28 Ford after Allison's death, won one of the 125s. Dale Earnhardt took the other. The two went at it immediately. It's battle for the lead. Earnhardt is there. Again, a challenge for the lead. This time it's Irvin to the bottom. Number 28, Ernie Irvin. Back in the first place. And you're riding with him as he scoots down to the bottom and makes it look pretty easy. Here comes Earnhardt back another time on the attack. All right, 28 was just unstable for a moment there. Like a, little, a little loose coming off of that turn. A caution sent everyone to the pits. It was the first chance to make adjustments. Of course, this is NASCAR racing at its best. All the cars were radioing in and they've got problems. They were either loose or pushing badly because of that temperature change that Chris mentioned earlier at the top of the show. So they just uh, have a caution flag and everybody comes in and everybody's changed tires and everybody has changed chassis setup. And that's what makes NASCAR racing so great and so close. Even with the handling problems, the first 62 laps came off without incident. Then Robert Presley lost it in turn four, and things got ugly. Major incident in turn ah. four. Seven, eight cars collected. Hutch Strickland is in it. Kyle Petty involved. Robert Presley was involved in it. Harry Gant is involved in it. First caution of the day is coming at lap number 62, just as they came across for 63. Todd Bodine took over after the restart. Earnhardt and Irvin joined him on the 75th lap. For first place. In lap 75, Earnhardt back in front. And but I hung out to dry. <laughs> Ernie Irvin makes his move. He yeah. comes right up in there. On the outside, just moves right around. That took horsepower to do that. And he's got it under the hood of that Ford. But Todd Bodine's day was about to be spoiled. Has become, I don't think, uh, Todd probably didn't know that Jeff Gordon was out there and they they just touched and sent him right into the wall the wrong way. It looked as though Bodine cut across the bow of Gordon there. And then as other cars come in, tries to slow down, well, they get involved. Uh -huh. Michael Walker thought he was okay. He thought yeah. he was through it. That's and then all of a sudden, car. he gets hit. Right up off the bottom. Dale Earnhardt seemed to be unstoppable. He responded to every challenge. Mark Martin led a couple of laps before the Intimidator took over again. But there were more challengers now. Morgan Shepard led at the halfway point. Mark Martin was running well. Then Irvin surged into the lead and stayed there for 24 laps. Earnhardt was leading at the 140 lap mark when the last caution of the race occurred. He came in for fuel, leaving it to 1990 winner Derek Koch. Earnhardt would not lead again that day. Sterling Marlin was in the number four Chevrolet, the team that Ernie Irvin had taken to victory in 1991. Marlin took the lead with 52 laps to go. Irvin soon moved into second, and it stayed that way until he passed Marlin with 43 laps left. Down to the inside moves Ernie Irvin to challenge again for the lead. Battling for first, and Ernie Irvin, 1991, Daytona 500 man, is back in first, and here comes Morgan Shepard on the inside, number 21 moving up. Trying to pass Earnhardt, taking over, trying to take over third. There's Jeff Gordon back in it. Been in it all day from the outset. That 22-year-old has given them all a fight. Marlin returned the favor 21 laps later. 21 laps to go. Fuel was now the issue. Could anyone finish without pitting? Did you hear that thing lean out, or were we just going know. away? Two laps to go. Five miles, a little less than five. Here's Jeff Gordon, back in fifth, Morgan Shepard in sixth. 
Morgan way up on the bank. The story is right here. The 500 to be decided. Will it be a new winner? In the 36th running of this race, Sterling Marlin. Terry Labonte has lost the draft of Mark Martin. I don't think he has much of a chance. Martin has probably lost the draft of these two cars. Another Looks car. like it might be one of the, these or another car going slowly down the back stretch has run out of fuel as well. And it's Mark Martin. We have Martin. Mark out of Martin. Fuel. Out of run fuel. out of fuel. The, the Fords are third. not getting the mileage the Chevrolets are getting. But one is white flag. Robert Yates, number 28, is still there. Last lap to the side at all. Sterling Marlin stays first. Ernie Irvin in second. Back straightaway final time. It's between these two cars. Has Troy Aikman brought, brought Sterling some luck? We'll see. Can Ernie Irvin pass him on this last lap, this in, last turn? Into turn three. Sterling Marlin in front. Ernie Irvin closing ground. Here they come, down the stretch for the final time. It is Sterling Marlin in the lead. Down to the inside comes the 28. Coming to the line. Sterling Marlin's going to win it. Ernie Irvin, who left the Morgan McClure ride to go with the 28 team of Robert Yates, is defeated by that team. And Sterling Marlin wins his first Winston Cup victory in the greatest race of them all. Sterling Marlin ran out of gas before he got to victory lane, but it didn't matter. His Daytona 500 championship was his first Winston Cup win. Well, I knew if I ever got with a you know good race team, and I tell you, boys worked awful hard all winter, and uh, we come down here to win it. And I knew when I left the house, we was gonna win the race, and uh, wasn't looking too good early, but uh, they done a heck of a job getting the car adjusted, and uh, man, I love them. Thank Kodak, Delco, Remy, everybody, I love them. Can you believe you're here? No, not really. Let's face myself.